A new catalytic converter is one of the more expensive parts to buy these days. But I want to warn you of something. Some inexpensive, make that word cheap, aftermarket catalytic converters do not pass some of the newer catalytic converter monitors. We're going to show you why. The solution is to buy your catalytic converters from a reputable, well-known converter manufacturer who stands behind their products and you won't have any problem. Otherwise, you're going to put on new, cheap converters and you may have to take them off and put others on in order to get the check engine light to turn off. Let's look at the codes and you'll see the differences. We got inefficient converter. Fine. What we think is important here is to read the enabling conditions. The engine speed, the engine is in closed loop and running at three, and running at least three minutes. ECT is over 147 degrees Fahrenheit. Throttle position is off idle. Engine speed is between 1200 and 1700. Narrow window. Pay attention to that. Vehicle speeds over 20 miles an hour. MEP is between 1.5 and 2 volts. So you see all the things that can keep this from running. The EFTA catalyst sensor switch rate was close to the fuel control sensor switch rate. Simple, straightforward. You're going to be looking at switch rates. This is the earlier versions. Later versions will be using something different. GM changed over about 2002-2003. Look at the red under enabling conditions. Some updated PCMs have the ability to run the catalyst monitor in the shop. Not all of them have it. By now most of them do. Shop testing. Run the engine at fast idle over 1500 RPM for one minute with the hood open. After returning to idle, put the transmission in drive. If the PCM has the update, the air fuel ratio will go over 15.3 for about 5 to 20 seconds, then drop below 14.1. The PCM is checking the converter for the lean and rich points for the test. Now you're going to see those in mode 6. They will say after converter or 0 02, 1, 02 or 0 02, 02, whatever after converter is rich point is here, lean point is there. It's the same rich and lean points been working before. Minimum 0.85, rich, minimum 0.1, lean. If it can't do that, you have a bad O2 sensor, and the system will not work. After that, it's going to go through about a seven-second test where it's going to take the system to the lean and the rich and vary the results. We're going to show you how this test works in a few minutes, but let's talk about what we're talking about, how these monitor efficiency, catalyst monitor efficiencies work. Catalyst efficiency monitors work. They're going to use the oxygen to before and after to infer hydrocarbon efficiency. What we're looking for is for a reduction in the amount of oxygen indicating we have consumed part of it to use up the hydrocarbons that came out and the carbon dioxide, monoxide, turning it all into carbon monoxide and water vapor. But some of the newer ones, like we read on the GM, are going to infer oxygen storage capacity. Can they store oxygen? And that's their measure for efficiency. So some use a switching rate. Are they both switching, rich and lean? Some are going to use oxygen storage capability. Now, when the engine's in closed loop operation, the catalyst efficiency is high. We're going to be looking, this is a graph off a scan tool about 300 seconds long. On the right is the pre-cat, that's the white trace, and the left is the post-cat, that's the yellow trace. We're going to show you the significance of what this test is all about. We're definitely going to be using grafting of the front and rear sensors. Now we can compare the two sensors somewhat like the monitor in OBD2 does. But this does not necessarily replace catalytic converter testing mandated by any state procedures use your state procedures. But what we have found is some state procedures still cannot identify the oxygen storage capability of catalytic converters and may miss some of these converters that are causing problems. If you have not put on a converter that still 
has a code with a brand new converter, yet you're lucky. Most people have. Now, let's talk about this and get down to the brass tacks. Be careful, because sometimes Chrysler doesn't title theirs catalyst monitors. They're titled post or rear O2 sensors. Now, they're going to run when the cat has had time to warm up and get hot. This is critical. Most of them run at engine at steady state cruising down the highway, but newer vehicles run at idle, some even during deacceleration, and that's the way we are going to test our vehicle, because by using acceleration, deacceleration, we can drive the system rich, we can drive it lean. The fuel control states will allow the PCM to drive the full system full rich. Now full rich will give us our maximum voltage. Full lean will give us a minimum voltage and that will be stored in mode 6. Remember our maximum voltage has to be at least 0.85 volts and our minimum voltage must be below 0.1. We can do the same type testing. We're going to have to do it by a test drive. We'll show you how we do that with a test drive. Here's a graph we started with where we showed you the location of the post O2 and the location of the pre O2. We're going to break it down and look at it piece by piece. As we look at this cruising down the highway, we see normal sensor operation for fuel control. We see steady readings on the post O2 or after catalyst O2 sensor. Now we're going to do is go to wide open throttle. After we go to wide open throttle, we see there's some changes there. We start accelerating. Remember, this is not just snapping while we're in the service bay. We're driving down the highway. There's some things that take place between stepping on the gas and getting to wide open throttle. What's going to happen? We're going to go lean initially and then finally go rich. When we go rich, notice that the yellow and the white both join together and go full rich. And that this voltage is higher than any voltage we've seen previously. This is the max voltage we see rich. This is the value that would be stored by mode 6 in the special state of fuel control where it takes it full rich. Now, we stay full rich for a while by holding the accelerator, then we decel. Notice as we decel, the white comes down, eventually getting back to the lowest point, zero volts. The yellow, after the catalyst, does not follow exactly. Remember, we're doing 12, 1500 RPM. Lots of exhaust flow. Lots of, when we go lean, lots of oxygen, yet it stays, it doesn't pass through initially until it, at the catalyst has absorbed all it can absorb. This delayed reaction indicates the amount of absorption we have. If the yellow moves in closer and starts following the white trace, we are not able to store oxygen in the catalyst. Now when we go full lean, the catalyst eventually gets there too. That's the same thing mode 6 is going to do with the O2 monitor to capture the minimum voltage. In this case it's near zero. So we're going from zero to about 0.95 volts well beyond our 0.1 to 0.85 range we expect to see. So this type of testing will identify catalysts that will be tested in the service bay. They will be ones that use the storage capability and if you put a cheap catalyst on a car that utilizes this it may fail because it won't pass this test. If you have any doubt, run this test and you'll see. So we use DSOs and so forth to look at the front and rear sensors. We can see more details than you're just going to look at simple Scandale grafting. Now long-term grafts like we had 302 seconds, that's a different situation. Remember some vehicles just simply count the number of fuel control crossings and compare that to the number of EFTACAT signal crossings like this. Green is pre-cat, red is post-cat. As you can see in the red trace, we have almost no activity at all, no crossings. Here's a bad catalyst. We've offset these because it's too confusing to look at. The green is about three quarters up for one volt. The red is halfway up for one volt. We are, I won't say we have good fuel control. We have fuel control problems on this vehicle. It's a high mileage vehicle, but the problem is ever so how, how bad fuel control is, the catalyst is following right behind it. Delayed just ever so slightly, 
but right behind it. It's doing the same thing. So that indicates a problem. It's the way we find it. Remember, we don't try to do this unless we have good fuel trim. If you've got outlandish fuel trim, it's not within plus or minus 25%. You may want to know the, re the results of this monitor because it may not be reliable. Here's one we did where we used battery negative for our ground instead of signal negative. We get the same information. We just have a lot more hash. Be aware of that. Now let's look at a vehicle that we're going to use our test on. This vehicle set a check engine light about three months after we tested it. We predicted it it would. It's a Jeep JTEC. Now look at the red scale. The red scale up at the right goes to one volt and if you look when we do full acceleration it's hitting one volt. In fact it's going over one volt that's why it looks like it's got a haircut. Now the green scale on the left also is getting a haircut at one volt. It doesn't go quite as high. We offset these slightly. When we decel, notice the green goes down to almost zero. But the delayed reaction in the post O2, look what it reads. It drops down between 0.4 and 0.3, reading off the right scale. It does not meet our 0 0.85, 0 0.1 tenth of a volt criteria. This sensor set a code in a few weeks, 12 weeks, 10 weeks, whatever. We don't know how long before the customer came back with it. We told him it was a sensor was dying. Three months later, he had it replaced. You sell them your smarts or your parts, but we can predict impending failures, and this is how we did it. Use the switching where it's necessary. What we should have done by now is help you understand how the O2 monitors and diagnostics are intertwined with CAT monitors and CAT diagnostics.